YouTube if you can do the same thing. And let okay, me just so see. The usual thing, guys. Let me just take my sound down. Um, if you can do the same thing and just share it where you're at. If you're on coming on YouTube, if you when you come on, if you hit the like button um, and just help the algorithm push us out there a little bit. Um, I know it's a warm day today, so I know that we might not get the same uh, numbers and stuff today because people are out enjoying the sun. But I, I'm actually looking forward to today because we're talking about dreams. We're looking at Genesis chapter 20. So we, we looked at that last week, but we're going to continue with it this week. Um, let me just see if I can actually share this. Um, I can't at the minute. Why not? Right, let's. Oh, here I can. So, um, again, share, like, comment. Hiya, Sonia. Hiya, Lily. Um, guys, if you're coming on, make sure you're saying hi. Make sure you're commenting. Um, we're going to be looking at dreams. And so one of the things that we're talking about, we're going to talk about how God speaks through dreams, how God speaks through visions, and how God speaks to us in many different ways. If you have anything you want to share, please do so in the comments and I will scroll back and try and look through them as we go along. So um, again, you know, we're going to try and do this uh, as succinctly as possible, going through the Bible, going through each chapter as we do. But we're going to be looking at it in the context of um, things speeding up and things increasing. I think that looks like I'm saying hi to myself, but as you know, that's not me, that's my wife. Um, so guys, if you're coming on, please do me the favor, take a second, take, oh, maybe it's not, and take, take a second and share, um, please help us get out, uh, we are very much censored on our, uh, Facebook page, so if you can share, hi Linda, hi Roberta, it just helps us an awful lot just to get out there, so, um, just take a second, while you're coming on, just share it where you're at. And we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 20. We're going to be flicking back and forward throughout the Bible. And we will talk about specific types of dreams. We'll talk about um, different things that how God speaks to us and how God communicates with us in different ways. And as such, we'll look about, we'll try and look as in depth with this as possible in the context of everything that's happening in the world right now. So again, um, we obviously are not getting uh, the same numbers that we would normally do. So uh, hopefully people start to see this coming out. So if you can share it where you're at, Kelly, if you could share it too, that would be fantastic. Oh, it's Lily on that, right? So um, anyway, I want to just continue as we are. So if you can, um, as we're going along, um, if you feel like you want to share anything about an encounter, a vision, a dream with God, we're going to look at it through the biblical context and how God speaks to us and that he never speaks outside the parameters of his word, but he does use different ways to speak to us. You know, um, we see that through the example of Jesus when he speaks to uh, fishermen, he speaks in the concept of fish. Hiya, Gary. Um, when he speaks to uh, shepherds, he speaks in the context of sheep and uh, sheep herding and so on. Hiya, Helen. So, guys, if we can, if you have anything that you want to share, try and keep it as succinct as possible, like dreams, visions, encounters with God. If you need any interpretation and so on, and I'll tell you why that interpretation is a biblical thing, uh, we'll look at that too. But if you can, as you're coming on, please do me the absolute favor. Be a media missionary and share like and comment okay so we're gonna look at this let's uh let's start and pray father god i just thank you for tonight lord i ask that even despite my office being extremely warm right now that you are dictating everything that we need to speak about and everything and every revelation comes from you and lord give me the grace and the the have the mercy on me to get through tonight and to to speak your words and not mine and Lord, I ask that this is enlightenment for people. This is revelation for people. And Lord, I ask that you speak through me, not just to, to me. Use my vocal cords and use my mind in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we're both on YouTube and on Facebook. And guys, if like I said, if you can, do me the favor of sharing, liking and commenting. It makes the world a difference, okay? I'll get a look at the comments as we go along. So if you have anything like soft, um uh like anything like a dream or anything like that there to share please just take a second and you know go ahead and you know share it 
okay so and we'll have a wee look at it and we'll have a wee if you've got any questions and so on so looking at genesis chapter 20 previously we looked at this and we looked at it in the, the context of the first verse and we talked about abraham coming and dwelling between kadesh and shur which in the hebrew translate as a wall and basically a walled place but they also translate much further when you go into the etymology of the word so like between when you're between a rock and a hard place you often feel completely and utterly stuck but when you look at this in the context of the message from God, when you look at the etymology of Kadesh and Shur, Kadesh is the, the word holy, right? It's the word holy. It's uh, we, where we get Kadem from, you know, um, it, it's the the holy place of God. And Shur is the, the, the etymology of the word goes into the description to arise, how you do, to arise, to stand and to arise with ex excitement. So in between the rock and the hard place, there is a call on the children of God to arise with excitement. So when we see the time escalating, when we see time starting to speed up, and it is. I'm going to tell you something about that in just a second. But time is literally speeding up. Prophetic time is speeding up. And therefore the prophetic unction and direction of God is going to speed up and is speeding up too. So from 2016, we know the time, as in the, the world itself, sorry, the world and the spinning in the orbit of the world has started to speed up. So from 2016, now the, the, the effects in um, sort of the physical realm are kind of inconsequential. They're not having big effects. But since 2016, we started to see a gradual speeding up of the world. So when the world starts to spin, we started to see a speeding up of it. By um, I think it was it was June 29th of this year. June 29th, it sped up to the point of 1.59 milliseconds faster than it had ever sped, uh, ever spun before. And why is that important? Well, I see that as a prophetic picture. That is, that the world starts to speed up then you start to see an escalation of things. Now, I think anybody looking at anything prophetically would start to see that there is an escalation of prophecy unfolding. Now, we know that as the, prophet, the, the prophetic picture seen in the book of Revelation is going, that we're heading in a, 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 to a world that will be a one world government, one world religion, one world uh, rule, one world currency. We're going to see all of that as in, not saying the church, but the world. Now, but there's an escalation happening. That has anybody noticed? If you've if you've noticed an escalating of time, as in things speeding up, hit one. If you've noticed that prophecy and 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 prophetic things seem to be happening at a much faster rate, hit one. Because I personally see that the the prophetic picture that we see with the world speeding up faster than it's ever spun before, to the 1.59 milliseconds faster than it's ever spun before, that's a prophetic picture for us to take notice of. It's kind of like, right, guys, we're in the sprint section of the race. Now, um, a few weeks ago, I shared on the Sunday about a prophetic word that I had from God, and I looked into the scripture of 1 Kings 18. You know this. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah races Ahab to Jezreel. Now Jezreel, the valley of Jezreel, I talked about this before, is 141 square miles. 141 is the geomatria for the word demon. It is also the geomatria for the word rain. So demon, demo, uh, uh, demonic and rain. So it's demonic rain. So the race that we're having is the race as things are starting to get darker, as the walls that we see in Genesis chapter 20, Kadesh and Shur, are starting to squeeze in, the church, the holy church, should be rising and girding our loins like Elijah does and outrunning Ahab. I'm very dark on Facebook here. I'm just trying to get this right. And outrunning Ahab to the 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 place in which God sows. So Jezreel literally means the place in which God has sown. So if we're going to the harvest, now's the time of the race. Guys, look at this prophetically. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you're getting what I'm saying, hit one. If you're getting it on YouTube, please give me a comment. Um, if you're seeing this, 
the world is spinning up. And if you look back, 2016 is when we started to see that like, we had the Trump presidency. We had a lot of things come up. We had, you know, witchcraft uh, go to the fore with um, Wicca members taking the Arch of Palmyra around different places in the world and making sacrifices and worshipping and trying to put curses on politicians. And we've seen this become a normal practice. And then things started to escalate. The world is speeding up and the church are to speed up. We are to gird our loins like Elijah did, gird our loins, Ephesians 6, with truth, not to um, go away or go outside the realms of truth. So I'm trying to get that light right. I apologize if the light's not right on that screen, but um, hopefully it's okay. So we're to gird our loins with truth and we're to run to the place in which God sown. In other words, it's time to uh, bring in the harvest. In fact, the book of Joel talks about a time in which the, the reaper will overtake the sower. And I personally believe this is the time. This is the time in which we've got to bring in the harvest. This is the time we're seeing things speed up. I'm going to give you a few examples of things speeding up. Um, there was uh, an article. I've actually just realized I've taken it off. Um, I did have it saved. But I've taken it off my screen. There was an article in which it was it was from a few years ago. And it was in America and it was a political article and it was talking about 72 different classifications of, of people who are classified as terrorist among the American government. So those who are seen as being of terrorist tendencies. And the the people equate to people who stand against abortion, stand against LGBTQ uh, as as the norm, stand um, for faith and faith above governing, right? They were classed as terrorists according to this article. Seventy two different classifications. If I find it, I'll throw up. If I go back to my notes and I find it, I'll throw it up in the the comments, uh, both on YouTube and Facebook later, and. But this is just a picture. Things are escalating. When you're starting to see the attention of the devil and the attention of principalities and powers turn upon the believer and those who stand for truth and righteousness, then you know that you're at the time where we know we are. You know, we're, we're at the, the, the time which I personally believe is the end part of end times, right? We know that we've stepped into end times from the book of 1 John because John tells us so. And I believe that we're coming to the end of end times in which the church has to go supernova, arise and shine because the walls are squeezing in. Is this making sense or am I losing you? Right. If I'm losing you, I'm sorry. But if it's making sense, please let me know. This year alone, we're seeing that Abu Dhabi Abrahamic family houses of worship finished. They will be finished this year. Uh, big companies are starting to take up the idea of personal take away the idea of personal ownership. So BlackRock, we know, has been buying up houses and, and streets and um, places across America, but they've also stepped into the food industry and BlackRock and Vanguard are increasing their hold over food production technologies whilst we're in the midst of the food shortage. We know I, I shared, or my wife shared an article um, from a, a farmer she knows, um, she that this, this lady had put up about in here, in this country, how they're being paid five thousand pound to cull their their cows to get rid of their cows in the midst of a, a global food shortage. They're being told to cull their cows. Why? Henry Kissinger once said, "If you control the food, you control the people." Right? It's about control. Hence, we're moving quickly to the Revelation thirteen system. And if we're moving quickly, it's purposeful for us to be motivated to move quickly too and it is also um, very evident that God is speaking clearly in many different ways to the church to get our attention to direct us in the midst of the darkness so right now in America they have weaponized IRS agents they've, they've um, increased another 87,000 IRS agents that are going to be armed again not not hard to believe that's all about trying to take control of people's money and trying to take control of what people use and spend their money on. You've got the, the um, development of CBDCs across the world, right? Central bank digital currencies that are going to be centralized. And there's um, a government aid that was with the Bush administration um, 
that came out and spoke about this. I talked about this in Mentoring, and she says about how this is a global CBDC. These aren't going to be national interests. We're seeing the development of the 10 nation system of Revelation 17. Things are speeding up, right? Now, if you see this, if things are speeding up, do you think that God's instruction will at least match or more likely overtake the cadence of the world? If the world has started to move at a faster rhythm, do you not think that God will start to or is instructing his people? This is what we see in the book of Joel. Right in the book of Joel and uh, two verse twenty eight says, "I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall uh, see visions. And also on my maid servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in these days." And it's it's requoted in Acts two seventeen, and it says, "And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit." On all flesh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams. In other words, if you think about it this way, excuse me, <coughs> if you think about it this way, if time is escalating, if the devil's plan and, and the unfolding of darkness and the Darkness covering the people and deep darkness, or darkness covering the land and deep darkness the people, Isaiah 60. If that is happening right now, which we're seeing, do you not think God's going to match his instruction or at least speed up his instruction past the cadence of the world? In other words, he's going to keep his children led safely. He's going to direct us to where we need to go and how we need to operate. In other words, if you look at it um, from this point of view, if you knew, if you were on a minefield and you knew every mine that was planted there, do you not think you would lead someone through that safely? Well, do you not think that we serve a, a good, good father who is better than us who are sinful, who wants to lead us and direct us in this path, who wants to lead us away from harm, direct us away from harm and direct us uh, to where we should go? But the point is, is we need to be attuned into what he's saying. Acts 7 verse 51 talks about us being of, uh, talks about having uncircumcised hearts and uncircumcised ears. You, children of God, are meant to be circumcised of heart and circumcised of ear. In other words, our ear and our hearts need to be in covenant and relationship with God so that we continually hear the leading of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Is this making sense? We're seeing the likes of the green agenda, net zero being pushed like mad. I personally see that net zero is the, the catalyst for an escalation of prophetic unfolding right now. Um, I see it right now. Sorry, people are messaging me. That the, the escalation of things, net zero has a big thing to play. People are turning around and it's very hot today, right? You know, for us, it's like over 30 degrees in places in Northern Ireland. But at that, People are going, oh, no, that's global warming. My thoughts are, oh, no, that's the summer, right? And thank goodness we've got at least a couple of days off it because we haven't had a, a full summer of warm weather. But the net zero green agenda is becoming a catalyst to speed things up and to speed different things coming into play. That's why they're cracking down. That's the excuse they're having to crack down on food, crack down on farmers, crack down on farm production. Now, I was listening to my friend Troy Brewer speak yesterday and he shared something on the, you know, the Georgia monolith, the, the what do you call them, the something stones. Um, if anybody knows, throw it in the comments. The... They, they they were put up by globalists. They were talking about how the world needs to be reduced to like five, uh, I think it's 500 million. Um, and they, they, they were destroyed a few weeks ago. But how they were destroyed was from lightning. Now, one of the things that he shared, which I thought was fantastic because it actually makes sense, is Georgia literally means, the word Georgia literally means agriculture or farming. And it's a prophetic picture of an attack upon the food source, an attack upon farming, an attack upon uh, the, the production of food. Go back to what Henry Kissinger said. And Henry Kissinger was a teacher of um, Klaus Schwab, the head of the WEF. 
control the food, you control the people. Now, I want to get to my actual message, right? Because I'm just trying to point out now that there's an escalation. There's a speeding up. If the world is moving at 1.59 milliseconds faster than it's ever moved before, and prophetic, yes, thank you, April, the Guidestones. Um, and as the world is moving faster and, prof and the, the realms of darkness are moving faster and you're seeing many more things unfold, that, by the way, the church has been talking about, like our church has been talking about for quite some time. We talked about, well, uh, last year sometime, like, yeah, over a year ago, we talked about uh, a massive food shortage coming and we haven't even hit the peak of it, right? We're, we're nowhere near the peak of it, by the way. I actually think uh, you'll see a lot of different things come out. You'll see not just the cost go up, but the, the food sources deplete. We're seeing an escalation. We're seeing an escalation of darkness. We're seeing an escalation of things. And we're seeing an escalation of the prophetic unfolding of things. And I personally believe we're at the Joel 2, Acts 2 moment where we're seeing the, the Spirit of God poured out and people having dreams and visions. Why? Well, let, let me just go in through our scripture that we're on here at the minute. We're in verse 3. Uh, or actually, verse 2. Now, Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you're a dead man because of the woman you have, whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Now, why did he come to him through a dream? Well, sometimes I believe that in our waking state, we're kind of oblivious to truth. You know, we can hear the scripture and you know this, like, you know, you could be preached the same song. You could sit in a church and somebody could say the same thing over and over again and you still haven't heard what is being said. But sometimes God needs us to get rid of our our, our conscious thoughts so that he can speak the word to us. In Job 33, verse 14, it says, for God may speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, now they're two different things. When deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. In other words, sometimes if we're too focused on all the, the distractions of the world, we don't hear what God is saying so sometimes God will impart wisdom instruction and guidance through a dream or a vision in order to cons to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man in other words he is stopping you hitting the mind in the minefield he is stopping you in the midst of darkness hitting the mind because and this is the choice we need to be so attuned to the voice of God that we we listen to our dreams and we we listen for Holy Spirit guided interpretation of our dreams. Now I think it's um, Genesis. Oh, I've lost my scripture. Genesis forty. Genesis forty verse eight. Turn there. Genesis forty and verse eight. I just want to show you something quickly with this. Um, and they said to him, this is talking to Joseph, we each have a, had a dream and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to him, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell them to me, please. So interpretations of your dreams and visions belong to God. They don't belong to New Age nonsense. We're reclaiming that, right? See the New Age nonsense that says, come and get your dream interpreted. And, you know, we hear the dream and, oh, you're going to meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger and all that nonsense. Um, no, the dream interpretation belongs to God. We know that God speaks through dreams. And if the enemy can cloud what you hear, he will sometimes even do it through the interpretation. So if God is speaking to you through a dream and you're trying to interpret it through a worldly sense, then that will be a problem. The enemy is getting in there to try and twist what you're hearing. Now, dreams are symbolic. Visions of the night are different. I remember um, two years ago, uh, 2020, Kelly and I were in bed. We were sort of going off to sleep and I heard in the hallway, someone stomping in bare feet. I knew it was bare feet. I, and the hallway is, you know, 
it's not far outside our door it just goes up and i could hear where they were and they were stomping on what sounded like sticky ground right like you know like if you picture somebody stomping on grapes or something like that they were stomping on on, on stickiness and it was on bare feet and i heard it and i woke her up right because i'm a big brave man and i'm going to go out and check at it right no i woke her up because i thought what is that and when i woke her up and you know we were talking very very quickly just conversing between each other trying to sort of see what was happening because i didn't feel any threat my youngest my four-year-old got up and walked through to the to the room so he walked through the to the where i'd heard it and it, we heard him talking to someone now we kind of freaked out at that stage we both got up we ran through and there was no one there and he was standing there and we asked him what did you who were you talking to and he said i was talking to the other daddy right and he says the daddy with the beard now yes I, i've got a wee bit of a beard now but back then i was clean shaven and he was said he talked about this i was talking to the other dad we asked him what did he say and he said the word shay now this is what i want to get to right he said the word shay then kelly got this overwhelming smell of like flowers and like this amazing aroma that just filled the room she couldn't place the aroma and then she started going to her um the, the bathroom cabinet and looking through all these different things and looking through for what the smell was and sniffing everything in the house and she finally found that the like i think hidden in a drawer somewhere she finally found something she opened it and it and she smelt it and she says that's the closest i find that turned out to be with well, the smell that she was smelling was shea oil and there was a whole load of searching in this there was a whole load of like we spent both of us spent i think the next couple of weeks just delving into what this meant because it was such an a, a overwhelming vision of the night but this is what i want to say to you and take this on board if you're if you're listening to it please let me know you're getting this it was it's the according to proverbs 25 verse 2 it is the glory of god to conceal a matter but the honor of a king to search out the matter right now abi melak in genesis chapter 20 his name literally means um my father is king so if his father is king then that makes him royalty too now do you know that Ro uh, revelation 1 6 tells you that you're royalty that you're of a royal priesthood a priesthood of melchizedek that you're both king and high priest and we serve the king of kings and do you think that if you think about that the king of kings is now conversing communicating with the kings those who believe in him and those who follow him and it is our honor to search out the matter why because when you search out what the dream is about what the vision is about what the, the experience and the appointment with god was about and what he was saying to you when you search out the matter and really delve into it it, it's a form of intimacy with him and that's what he seeks so whenever you get a dream from god and you go away and you just go on this like mad searching thing you know my wife does it all the time and she gets out and she starts to look things up on the computer and look things up in the bible and she's trying to figure out what exactly every element and every every ounce of what he was saying to her and then you realize that that whole process is a form of intimate communication so he uses the dreams and the visions of the night to stop us falling to pride and stop us falling to the minefield. But in the process, which I think is amazing, there is such a degree of intimacy that it just changes your walk. And every major godly dream I've had and godly vision I've had has just altered my walk. It's an encounter with God and every encounter with God should alter your walk slightly. When Jacob wrestled with God in Genesis 38, when, or yeah, Genesis 38, when Jesus, Jacob wrestled with God, he was left with a, a touch to his hip that changed the way he walked for the rest of his life. And every encounter and every moment and every dream and every vision should change and slightly alter your course so that you're walking closer in intimacy and proximity to God. Is this making sense, guys? Now, I want you to to um, 
again, like I'm going to talk about a couple of things and talk, talk about a couple of encounters and share them with you and share different types of encounters. But I want you to share with me. If you have a dream, a vision or anything like that, please share. You know, we've had, I, I know that one of the most famous dreams that I've talked about was my, uh, for me, my country road stream. Now I name it my country road stream because that's how I woke up. I woke up singing the song Country Roads. But there was so much to the dream to take notice of. For instance, even the time that I woke up, which was 10 minutes past three. And when I woke up, God directed me to Revelation 3.10. So there's everything. Nothing's by mistake when God's speaking to you. And when you understand this, it gives you an intimacy to see much more clearly in the spiritual sense as opposed to the fleshly sense. As opposed to looking at things like the world. So in that uh, dream, that was pre-pandemic, that was pre-lockdown, I saw the church, This, and we shared this, I saw the church out of the church. We were pushed out of the building. And in fact, we were pushed out of uh, any building. We, were, we kept going into smaller and smaller and smaller settings, and we kept getting squeezed. Now, if you go back to Genesis 20, Kadesh and sure wall and the walled place like between a, a rock and a hard place and many people felt that during the the height of the pandemic and the height of lockdown that you're being pushed that you're being squeezed but in the midst of that squeeze one of the things that happened is in that dream i saw the church with us and we were directed to go up the mountain i spoke to my i, I spoke yesterday to my mentoring team about going up the mountain Going up the mountain is not a call for us to go hiking, guys, right? Going up the mountain is synonymous within scripture about drawing close to God. So in the midst of the squeeze, draw close to God. And I, and in that, we were the remnant church were drawing close to God and we were going up and up the mountain to the point that we were continually being chased down. We're now at the top of the mountain in the dream. And as we're at the top of the mountain, there's a, I see a door in front of us and everybody starts to go through the door. Everybody who's a believer, everybody who's up the church. And as I go through the door, the door shuts behind me and I see everybody who was chasing us down left and left behind. And at that point, I look and I just see the hallway in front of me that is just opening up into this space. And I hear the song, Country Roads, take me home to the place that I belong. And I wake up at 10 past three in the morning. And Revelation 3.10 talks about, it's the only verse, I'm going to give you, it's the only verse in the Bible that actually commands a specific church that they will escape the great tribulation. Revelation 3 and verse 10 says, because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, another word for the great tribulation, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. So I woke up and I was elated and I felt great about this. But I had this change in my walk because I knew that I had to remain faithful like the Revelation Church, three Philadelphia churches, to his name and his word. And it was just like this, right, you know what, what, what the commission is. You know what God's wanted. Do not depart from the word. Do not depart from the glory of his name. Do not depart from worshiping him and spending time with him. And I, I, I want you to understand right now in the world, distraction is increasing at an exponential rate. And God will sometimes use our dreams to quieten the flesh and distraction and give us insight into moving forward and how we should move. So, guys, if you're getting, if you're getting, is that your husband's favorite song, Linda? Um, I love it. Now, I didn't actually like it before I dreamt of it. And now it's on my playlists, most of my playlists. So there's loads, like I could talk forever on all the dreams that I've had. But I want you to understand there's different types of dreams. There's dreams of encouragement where God will speak an encouraging word to you, where God will give you an insight into something and it will encourage you and uplift you. It's a little bit like how we know that we have ministering angels, Hebrews 1.14, that the angels are to minister to us for the point of strengthening. Like we saw with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, like we saw with Paul and with Peter, we saw the angels came along and strengthened them, right? So sometimes even through the, the concept of it, or even through the medium of a dream, that whenever you're having that dream or a vision, it will just encourage you in your walk because God knows that's what you need. 
Other dreams, probably one of the more uh, common ones, are dreams of warning, right? Um, whenever you've had a warning dream, again, you will know about it. You know, whenever God warns you of something, you wake up with an unction, an, an overwhelming unction to pray, right? As in, like, you know that when you wake up in the morning, you've got that emptiness in your stomach and you're just dying for your breakfast or, you know, for me, it's a cup of coffee, just having something in you. Well, it's kind of like that. You just can't get away. You need to pray. And that usually comes off the back of a warning dream. You know, um, pre the, the election of Joe Biden, pre the whatever you think about what happened with those elections or anything like that, pre that on the 15th of September of that year, so it was pre the, the actual election and all of that. Everybody was saying that Trump would win. And regardless of whether you wanted him to or not, I personally did. But I had a dream that he didn't. I had a dream that Joe Biden did. Now, I'm not saying, that, again, legal ways of winning or anything like that. But I, I dreamt that Joe Biden had won. And I dreamt an awful lot around it. And it was a warning dream. Because in that dream, I had seen that... All these people were walking around and they were being dictated to by the spirit of media. And they were walking around, they were pressing buttons on their hand like a remote control. And every time they pressed it, they were getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And then in the midst of that, I saw a, a, a demon in the dream that I had seen before and a, Kelly had seen before. And I know other people had seen before this dream, this demon with a scar under his eye. And I'd seen him walking with the pre, with Joe Biden and he was leading him. And I heard heard God speak that this is the spirit of the media trying to lay the path and lay the ground for the emergence of the lawless one. And then I saw the lineup of people. And specifically children. And they were all being injected. They were all being needled. And I'll not go into that because I don't want censored. But I saw all of that. And I heard um, a warning over that. That I'll not go into. Then from there I was lifted. Like I lifted by the her. Um, like you see in Ezekiel 8. And I was lifted and placed into this um, room. That's a little bit like a sunroom. And I saw two people. Two women in the corner fighting. And I knew that they they represented witchcraft and occultish activity. And I knew from there there was going to be a massive increase in occultish activity and witchcraft. And the world was better be prepared for it. Right. And we should pray against this. Then I turned to the corner. Uh, if I was facing that way, it'd be that corner over there. And I turned to the corner. and I saw a man sitting there with the angriest face I'd ever seen. And I heard civil war and i heard civil war now obviously this was directed around america but at the same point it i think it was it was talking about the, the rise of anger in people now the big message in that dream was yes this is warning but then i saw a church member run through the doors and hand the shofar and say now's the time to blow now that was a massive dream that it, it changed the way i walked because i knew god was giving me a proximity alert now, whether you take stock in my dreams or not, I'm not asking you to. I know when God's spoken to me. If you have a dream or a vision or an encounter with God that you want to share, please, please, please do. So I'll tell you another one. There's, Like I said, there's there's um, a confirmation dream. Sometimes God will speak through confirmation in dreams. So before we bought our house, I was quite nervous about buying the house. Um, I was quite nervous about moving further away. And also, um, there were things that happened beforehand that I wasn't 100% sure whether the house sale would go through. And I remember being extremely nervous about this. But my wife um, had a dream. And she says, I saw three letters. And I saw three letters on the windowsill. And the three is the number of uh, completion. And the, the third letter, she told me that this is confirmation. You see these three letters. And you're confirmed that you're going to get this house. And right enough, we saw three letters on the windowsill on completion. And that was a confirmation dream. And I want to, to, to point this out. God is trying to direct you in a massive way. He is speaking through visions and dreams. I know people because I got, I got a dream about 10 minutes before, not for me, someone messaged me a dream. 
from the other side of the world about 10 minutes before we came on air i get people messaging me dreams all the time visions all the time um but remember this is how sometimes it's not that god is choosing to wait until you're asleep to talk to you and it's not that every dream or vision that you have is from god right you know but do you understand that when god speaks it is the he's speaking the king of kings to the kings right the king of kings communicating with kings abimelech right my father is king and god speaks to him through a dream we are kings we are royalty revelation 1 6 and he communicates with us this way if this is making sense guys please let me know if you've had an encounter with god you know listen do not limit uh, your life with god to what religion tells you that's not what it is i remember when we lost our when we had our second miscarriage lost the baby and i remember um kelly was quite upset and she was sort of down and i'd taken her for a drive and i'd taken her for a drive to a wee bit by the sea and there was this path by the sea it just just very narrow path you just go round the sea wall and she was just walking along there with her our uh other two kids at the time and she was just walking along there and she was a bit ahead of me i think i'd taken a phone call and there was a man she met like an older man who started talking to her and she just felt the spirit of heaviness just lift just completely lift isn't that right kelly um just completely lift but by the time like i could see this but by the time i actually came along and actually got there he'd gone he just had gone and there was nowhere for him unless he jumped into the sea and maybe we did maybe he did and maybe we just didn't see him and nobody jumped in to save him but no idea how he disappeared or where he went but that's an encounter with i personally believe that the bible tells us that sometimes you will entertain angels on ours that sometimes there's those appointments those moments and you can't limit God by the religious element of what we see in society and by the religious structures of people telling you that God doesn't speak to you like that. God doesn't appear to you like that. Because on that basis, the, then people would listen to the Pharisees when Jesus came and said, well, God's not going to show up in a, a, a fishing village, nor is he going to show up as a son of a carpenter, nor is he going to go to a bunch of fishermen and say, here, follow me. Because they are putting God in a box and God is infinitely bigger and better and, and more amazing than anything you can possibly utterly comprehend. You know, it says that like, we, we don't perceive things when God speaks to us. I'm telling you right now, I personally believe that we're at the point in which God is telling us more and more what direction where we should go what we should do how we should communicate with people um, and, and giving us prophetic pictures along the way one of the other things i want to share with you is what i what i call prophetic snapshots right or prophetic polaroids kelly gets a lot of these i know people in church do too when you could just be praying and god just gives you a boom one second two second picture and again it's just like a nod none of this should, should ever counter what the bible says it should direct you to the Bible. So I know, for instance, Kelly uh, would be listening to the service. She'd be sitting there and she'd get a prophetic snapshot and she'd come up and tell me at the end. But again, Proverbs 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of a king to search it out because that's the intimate point. When you start searching out what God is saying and you start finding out what way you should be walking, what should be being done. And this is how we follow him. Guys, there's not a lot of communication going on here. I need more communication. If you're getting this, please let me know. If you've got questions, let me know whether it's about how God speaks to the prophetic, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, whether it's dreams, visions, questions, uh, dreams or visions you want to share times with god please type them up and please let me know i'm not seeing a lot of comments here but i need them more so i want you to understand that god in this time as the time is escalating i personally 100 percent with every part of my being believe that he is outpouring his spirit so people will experience dreams and visions and have that communication and have that intimacy with them why because the point of intimacy specifically with not just receiving a dream or a vision but seeking out 
about the matter gives us that ability to go up the mountain. It's kind of like him shouting from the top of the mountain. Here, guys, come up here. He gives us a dream or a vision and you go, what does that mean? Well, to find out what it means, you have to draw closer to God. You have to actually search out the matter. You have to get hold of the word. You have to open up the word and find out what he's saying. A few years ago, he gave me a, a dream about mountaintops and it was just really clear but really confusing and I didn't know what it was and I remember going and searching out and doing a massive study on the mountain ranges in Israel and it was just so uh, uplifting of my spirit because it just really spoke to me and then I remember the very next day and I, I talked about this dream and I talked about being uh sort of like uh at the it was sort of first hand vision you know like just looking through my eyes and i remember being at the top of this mountain and looking down and seeing this square in the ground and seeing a man rise out of the square and i heard uh, the the words a new caliphate rising and it wasn't until the very next day when a friend of mine another preacher in america um shared one of his holiday pictures from israel that it was the exact same picture, but it wasn't the exact same picture alone. It was the exact same point of view that I had seen in my dream. And I remember messaging him and he was just said, wow. And he said, what does this mean? And then I says, right, I got to go and search this out. A new caliphate rising. And then I searched out, oh my goodness, what's happening with the Ottoman Empire? And the very fact that we look at Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who wants to reestablish the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, why, when? By next year, the 500th anniversary. And he's looking to reestablish this. And I'm saying to you that God is directing your vision and he is directing your vision to the mountaintop, that that is your source, not CNN, not Fox News, not 24-hour news, not BBC see not die tv not whatever it is simply focusing on god and listen to the one calling from the mountaintop and whenever we are call, getting called from the mountaintop for us to go up the mountaintop we follow the leader we follow the, the course that he has set for us and he has given that and through dreams and visions and, and encounters it talks to us to give us that intimate uh unction to seek out the matter is this making sense Love how God gives insight to prepare us for the days ahead. I also love how the Holy Spirit weeds our hearts. Amen. Because sometimes in dreams, this is another thing, the dream will be, remember it says in Job 33 verse 14 that it is to stop us falling to pride. Sometimes the remove, what happens within the dream is God will flag things up that need to be removed. Right. So whether there's unforgiveness, unforgiveness, bitterness, uh, maybe hurt or pain from the past. And he, he, he brings them to our attention for us to actually go and and use the word to weed it, use the spirit to weed it, to actually pull up the roots of the things that have tried to take uh, uh, foundation and take root in our lives. And he you're right. He corrects so gently because it's like a sweet voice in the middle of the night says, look, look, child, you haven't dealt with this. Look, you haven't actually focused on this. What about this? Now, we've had some amazing dreams that have just been so absolutely prophetic. And I'm not talking from me. I'm talking about people in the church. And sometimes you will have a dream that will also have an effect or a message for someone else. Think of it this way. If God is trying to speak to me and I stop reading, I stop listening, I switch off, I don't want to hear anymore, I stick my fingers in my ear. Sometimes what he does is he'll speak to another person through a dream or a vision, give them the message and that person will come along for that message for them. So sometimes I'm talking about different types of messages and dreams from God. He will give you a dream to correct you. He will give you a dream to for you to weed your life. He will give you a dream for you to be a messenger. Right. And he will give you a dream to stop you falling to pride. He will give you a dream to encourage you. But isn't it amazing that in each and every opportunity we get to seek the matter out and we get to grow in intimacy with him. And if you take this on board as we're starting to finish here, as we're wrapping up, understand that time is speeding up. As in, we are looking at the world speeding up to 1.5 milliseconds faster than it's ever gone. We're seeing prophetic things unfold like never before. We're seeing the increase of pro, uh, uh, prophetic convergence like never before. And we're seeing and we have a merciful, loving God who's continually trying to get your attention. And he will do it in the sweetest, most caring ways. Sometimes if we're refusing to read and refusing to seek him because we've let bitterness or unforgiveness or whatever settle in 
then he will speak to you through the dream. He will speak to you through the vision. Now, I know uh, I, I was talking, someone messaged me earlier. Um, they had a dream. I'm not going into all the dream, but to give you an idea, the interpretation is from God. So whenever you get, whenever someone has a dream, it is up to us to go to God and seek for what he has given us, right? Um, you were given, D was given Psalm 26 and verse 2. Examine me, O Lord, prove me, try my mind and my heart. Well, look, that's that's very, very apt, right? I wouldn't be surprised if God will uh, enlighten you as to some things that need to be uprooted, some things that need to be uh, focused on, maybe an identity issue and some things that you need to refocus on about who you are in him. You know, it, quite often the biggest attack we have in life is over our identity. You know, that's the biggest tool the enemy has is if he can take away your identity in him. Uh, in, in Christ, that if he can chink away at that, then he can cause you to believe something else. You woke up at 26 minutes past two. Well, then do a, a little tip, you know, pray to God. Right. And ask God for um, anything else on that. Right. As in ask him for insight, seek him, draw close to him. Right. And. Because if you looked at, like, if we took Genesis 26, verse 2, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. Egypt in the Bible is synonymous. It's a, 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 a type or a shadow of the world. So do not go down to the world. In other words, it could be a case of God. Now, you're ne you need to seek out the matter, D. But it could be a case of God's warning you that the world is going to try and pull you, the spirit of the world behind it. Maybe that's through distraction. Maybe that's through different things happening. And do not go down to the world. In other words, draw close to him instead. Does that make sense? And guys, if you if you if you let me know if you're getting any of this, if, if anybody has a question, a, 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 an encounter, like they said, like I said, with God, um, Kelly, I know you've had hundreds, but um it's understanding that it's our job to search the matter. I then saw an angel blowing a trumpet and a dove in the sky. Well, the angel blowing a trumpet, that's uh, significant with battle, right? We can, the obvious place to go with that is rapture, but I would go with uh, the angel that took out 185,000 people of the enemy and a dove in the sky and the whole, is the, a dove is the Holy Spirit. So if you saw an angel blowing a trumpet and a, the Holy Spirit in the sky, um, I personally would see that as a, a spiritual battle in connection with uh, what uh, Psalm 26 verse 2 says and connection with what Genesis 26 verse 2 says. So if that makes sense, D, let me know. Guys, If you, what I'm saying to you is, is that God is speaking so audibly, so loudly everywhere you go. You know, it could be through a child. It could be through a friend. Now, it will never, ever counter the Bible. Right. And if you ever get away from the framework of the Bible, you're going into New Age nonsense. But remember, dreams and visions were not from the New Age element. They were from God. Job 33 verse 14. And they were for specific purpose. So if you want to hear from God more, it's about having a prophetic eye to see. Like one of the ones that I, I was talking about on Sunday when we were out on outreach. And we were in town and we were in front of um, St. Anne's Cathedral. And we were in front of St. Anne's Cathedral, which was all locked up. And, and the stairs facing it, the steps facing it, there was a, a, a group of people who were um, homeless and they were all taking drugs. And then there was another three people in the corner who were taking heroin. And it just hit me that God gave me a prophetic picture of the, right there and then. That this is a prophetic picture to see that the church has closed its doors while hell is reigning rampant, while hell is gaining territory. And it spoke to me this and I got a warning from God. Do not let this happen. Do not shut the doors of the church. Instead, get out and be the church. So it's it's having an eye to see what God is saying, because God is speaking and it never differentiates from the word. But he speaks to you all the time. He speaks to you through visions and dreams. Like one of the biggest visions I had uh, that really changed me was on December 21st of last year, of 2021. 
Now, there's something in that, the fact that it's uh, 21st of the 12th, 21. There's something in that, right? Um, is that a palindrome? I'm not sure. But when you look at that, uh, at, at the whole vision, that was like a new level of immersiveness and encounter. Because whenever I um, had it, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't even know I was speaking and people go oh well then that sounds like you're just you know something's wrong you're high listen i don't take drugs and you can be guaranteed i was not high i was laying down to go to sleep and the holy spirit started speaking and started showing me this vision and he showed me this vision of of the, the tower of babel the new tower of babel being built and he showed me this vision of dried cracked ground and the dead church and then the church that is bearing fruit and producing and, and, and flowing in new wine and then he showed me the mountain and the, the walk towards the the holiness of god and all of this was so immersive then I actually woke Kelly up because I started speaking out loud and I didn't even know that I was speaking out loud. I had no idea what I was saying. And, and then she sort of shook me and says, start writing this down. And I started to write it all down. God is willing to, this isn't just a discern, this isn't God saying, right, I'll give a vision to that person and a dream to that person. The Holy Spirit, the cup is overflowing and it is pouring out because he wants to give you instruction to keep us from falling to pride and to falling to the ways of the world and to falling to darkness. He wants to instruct you and guide you and lead you. And if you're not awake to that, guys, then that's a problem, right? Because if you're confining God into a box and saying, this is the only way God will ever communicate with me you're missing it now i don't believe like i said that it, god ever communicates anything that isn't in this word right everything will be in this word or cooperate this word now in that we know that he continually wants to speak to us first corinthians 12 tells you that he gives you words of prophecy he gives you words of wisdom he gives you words of knowledge now there's times in my life when i've been out and i've been walking with people and god has given me a word of knowledge about them some of them have been so faith testing that I have not wanted to say, say them. I remember being out and praying with someone in the street and God showed me that individual being abused as a child and I didn't want to say it but I had to say it and when I said it it was like the key had unlocked the, the, the door and the lock had fallen off and the, the guy actually opened up about everything and gave his heart to, heart to Jesus. Words of knowledge and words of wisdom are not for you to be walking around like some mystic Meg. It is just the fact that you're in the proximity and in the mm -hmm. communication with God and you're wanting to spend time communicating with God. Guys, I hope this has made sense tonight. It is very, very warm in here. My battery is running low and I am going to go. But guys, if you have dreams or uh, if you have visions, I know some people are afraid of actually putting them up and out there. Um, thank you, Dee, for saying what God was speaking to you. Um, but if you are... I love the word of knowledge you got about the guy who was afraid of people who could read. <laughs> yes, I don't have time to share that, Kelly, but thank you. Right. I was taught. I'll try quickly. My battery might go, but I was sharing with a guy and um, I gave him a word of knowledge about his pet. He didn't tell me he had a pet, but I saw him with a specifically colored cat in his house, blah, blah, blah. And then he kind of freaked out because um, <laughs> he thought I was reading his mind. And he says, I don't trust anybody that reads minds. So you're, and, and kind of sort of started saying like, oh, and anyway, it went off and it was just went on for ages. And it was hard to get away from. And it was just a word of knowledge that I thought would really talk to him. But it, uh, it kind of backfired. It was probably my delivery. It was not the word. So, guys, I am sorry I have to leave you, but we are on Batteries Fleishing right now on Facebook. I'm still on YouTube, okay, but I'm Batteries Fleishing on Facebook. Guys, if you have any dreams or any visions, please, uh, I prefer you throw them up here. If you got anything from tonight, please let me know. Hit one if you got something from tonight. Guys, if you've got something here on YouTube, if you've got something from tonight, please let me know. Give a comment. Or give a thumbs up or something like that. Um, and... Just stay blessed, guys. Honestly, intimacy is found in the searching. When God speaks to you, keep a dream book beside your bed, right? Keep a book beside your bed. Write down your dreams. If you wake up and you think they're a load of nonsense, that's fine. But honestly, there's some times in which God is just speaking such amazing insight into you, right? I've had words of knowledge that have literally changed the course of my life. And I'm not, I can't even go into it, but I'm not, I'm not exaggerating that. I mean, changed the actual course of my life. And it was kind of like, whoa, God, that was so on the money.
He wants to communicate with you. He really does. And it's up to you to stay in communication with him. The glory of God. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the honour of a king to search it out. So guys, God bless. I am sweating. It is very, very, very hot in my office right now. So I'm going to go. Love and ladies. Get down to Victory Church on Sunday. Again, another great service planned. And I am talking, we have this thing coming up in September. It is going to be a Kickstarter program. It is talking about walking in the spirit, walking kingdom minded, being able to operate kingdom minded from everything, from how you outreach, from how you uh, share the gospel, from how you actually walk your life financially in every different way and how you, maybe God is directing you to start a business, whatever it is, the kingdom Kickstarter course will start in September. So if you're interested in that, um, don't hit a one because I'll get confused, but hit two. Uh, type two and um, we'll maybe get back to you on that. Okay, guys, God bless. And the same for YouTube. I'm going to go now. So um, if you have any comments, please th show them below. If you're watching this later and you want to argue with me, bear in mind that um, I will not probably read it. And I will just give you a thumbs up if I do. So God bless.